What's up, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in. This is the Rob Guillory podcast slash YouTube channel. Still figuring out exactly what it is. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me up to this point as I learn how to talk into a camera in my office by myself with a microphone and lights shining in my face. It's kind of strange. It's not really my thing, but I'm getting the hang of it. So uh, if you don't know me, if you haven't tuned in to previous videos, I'm a comic book creator slash artist slash writer. Been doing this for about 15 to 20 years. It gets a little a little foggy with all the free work and spec work and indie work I did in the early 2000s, but short version is I've been doing this for a long time and I've learned a, a thing or two. I've made tons of mistakes and uh, I've started this channel to inspire, encourage, and to give insight into what can be a very frustrating industry. And of course, I'm talking about the comic book industry, but it isn't, it's not just exclusively comics. Really, a lot of what I have to say, I think, appeals to any creative industry and just, I mean, even not creative industries. Uh, so I, up to this point, everything I've been talking about has been uh, not just giving insight into process, but also giving insight into my thought process, into how I sort of the, how my philosophy behind my work and how I relate to clients and uh, all of the experiences I've had coming up in the comic industry. So. Last week, I spoke about being honest with yourself, the value of uh, just really taking a sober inventory of where you are as a creative, and I want to build on that this week. So this week's video has to do with dealing with criticism, which in today's age, social media, which has just ballooned. I've, I've, I feel like I got, I've had a, a front row seat watching social media just blow up in the last 20 years from you know MySpace to... Facebook to where we are with TikTok and everything. It's been nuts to watch. So criticism is a huge part of really everyone's life at this point, and we're all going to face it at some point. So today's video is about dealing with that criticism, trying to take what can be an overwhelmingly negative experience being criticized and using that to sort of be a superpower. How do you use that criticism to make yourself better as a creator? So I'm going to work on some commissions here. So Come along with me and we can talk about that. All right. So last week I spent some time talking about the value of just being honest with yourself in whatever field you're in. And that sort of ended up dovetailing into a brief conversation on the value of portfolio reviews and just generally getting critiques. I didn't get to get too much into portfolio reviews largely because of time constraints. So that's really what I want to dig into this week, mainly because I just think it's a very underrated topic for a creative and really for anyone in any line of work. No, no matter what your chosen career is, you're, you're going to deal with criticism, especially nowadays. And you're going to need to know how to deal with that criticism in a healthy and a useful way. So as always, and because I'm just a storyteller at heart, I'm going to illuminate my point by way of a story because that's, that's just what I do. So this story takes place in the early 2000s, around 2004. I was about 22 years old. I was about a year away from graduating college and doing whatever. I had no idea what I was doing. Really, the dream was comics, but I was just kind of knocking around. So by this time, I had been pursuing comics as a career for about three years. I was going to at least a couple conventions a year, getting portfolio reviews, you know, changing business cards, making contacts, all that kind of thing. And at that point, I was traveling the shows with a few friends of mine. Who were, they were also looking. To, they were also artists looking to break into comics. We were all college guys at that time, which means that we were super poor. We had no money, so every so often we pull our meager resources. We rent a car, we get a hotel room, we drive out to a convention, seeking fame and fortune in comics or whatever we were looking for. It was good times, and at that point. All the shows that we'd done were in the Texas area because we were Louisiana guys. So every, we were always in Dallas or Houston or Austin. Um, it was just an easier trip because we were in Louisiana. So we tended to stick to the, to the Wizard World conventions, which were pretty much everywhere back then. But then we heard about a new wizard show in Long Beach, California. And for whatever reason, we decided we were going to make the trip. And to seal the deal, a few weeks before the show... Image Comics announced Eric Larson as their new publisher. And for anyone who doesn't know, Image Comics was pretty much what it was every wannabe comic creator's dream was to be published at, at Image Comics. We all grew up with them. So, you know, 
Of course, we wanted to draw Spider-Man and Batman, but deep down, we also wanted to be Todd McFarlane. And, and Eric Larson was one of the Image Comics' original founders right alongside Todd, or alongside Todd. So now, I mean, he was now the publisher of the company at that point. So he was the guy who'd be reviewing all of our portfolios and approving new projects. And as fate would have it, Eric was going to be a featured guest at the same Long Beach convention we were all going to. So, of course, naturally, me and my buddy started doing what pretty much every college fanboy does. We started fantasizing about how we were going to show Eric our portfolios and basically take over Image Comics. We figured that we were so awesome that Eric would have no choice but to give us jobs on the spot. Because how could he not? It was all so perfect and completely delusional. So we hoped, we, we hopped into our little uh, rented Chevy Impala and we drove about 28 hours from Louisiana to Long Beach. And we used printed maps from MapQuest because iPhones were not a thing yet, which seems completely crazy to me. I have no idea how we didn't get lost or murdered or something, but I, dig I digress. We made it to Long Beach in one piece. One piece. Um, so all weekend long, we stalked Eric Larson. In fact, I remember nothing else from the show but returning to Eric's booth over and over again all weekend and just him consistently shooing us away because he was a busy dude. He had just been named publisher and everybody wanted to talk to him. So I, I completely understood. He just kept saying, come back into the day on Sunday, which we did. So at the end of the show, me and my this little ragtag band of college dudes finally got our moment with Eric. So we whipped out our portfolios and we were almost, I, I remember practically shaking with anticipation. And within about the course of about 45 seconds, Eric Larson completely ate our lunch. He destroyed us. It was, <laughs> it was almost a thing of beauty. It's kind of like that scene in The Matrix where Neo is just effortlessly beating like all of the Mr. Smiths with a pipe. He just systematically dismantled all of our portfolios. I mean, he, it just, he didn't even break a sweat. Eric just saw every single flaw that we had in our work. And he, met, he completely, he just let us know about it. He had no qualms about it whatsoever. <laughs> um, and this is pretty much what we drove 28 hours to get. Um, you know, it, did it hurt? I mean, absolutely. You know, th there was a part of me that felt like a complete fool. We spent all that money. We drove all that way just to discover we were not good enough. And that really, really hurt. But here's the crossroads moment. This is the moment of truth moment. And that's really what I want to focus on here. In that moment of disappointment, I had a choice. And I think, I think we all get faced with that same choice at some point, especially as creatives. And the choice was this. I could get angry about what happened, about what Eric had to say about my work, and the disappointment of driving that far, spending that much money, and totally being bummed out about it. I could have an ego about it and get angry. Or I could actually listen to what he had to say. I could try to find where is the truth in what he's saying and use that truth to get better. You see, the thing is, I knew that Eric was right. Deep inside, though I didn't want to admit it to myself, I totally knew he was right about everything. He saw through every single trick that I was using to cover my weakness as an artist. I was completely exposed and I, I knew it. So I just decided to get, to get better at it, to get better at my craft. So I took Eric's critique to heart and I got better at navigating a comic book page. And I focused on line weights, which I was really bad at at that point. I was basically using technology to cover the fact that I had some significant weaknesses as an illustrator. So I took to heart what Eric had to say. And to be completely honest, it made me a better artist in the long run. So since then, I've actually had the pleasure of speaking on panels with Eric. And it's really, really surreal to, to do that, to see the same guy that tore my artwork apart is on the side of me at a panel. It's pretty special. And I'm super grateful. I've actually showed, I've actually shared my story, this story with Eric before and thanked him for it. And of course, he has, a, he has absolutely no recollection this even happened. Of course he doesn't. He, 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 he's reviewed God knows how many portfolios. He has no idea. Uh, but it meant a lot to me. 
So really at this point, you'll notice that a lot of this channel tends to focus on how, on, on how we behave as comic creators. I've spoken way less about how to draw and more about how to be. And that's on purpose. Now, I would definitely be speaking a lot on process and that sort of thing. But I think process, I think that my process is not the most important value that I can offer a young comic creator listening to this. The truth is, at least from my experience, that drawing well or writing well are not necessarily the secrets to a long lasting career in comics. I have seen talented comic creators come and go in the blink of an eye. I've watched guys blow up and be huge, usually successful in this industry and just flame out and burn themselves out and you never hear from them again. But I have noticed that the ones, the comic creators that stay and have the longest careers tend to be the ones with something more intangible than pretty art or eloquent writing. Sure, they're talented. You have to be talented to get work in this industry for the most part. But these people, the ones that I'm talking about who have these long careers, tend to not be the flashiest. They often aren't the, the best, the quote-unquote best, whatever that even means. They're, but they are the most reliable. They're the most studious. And usually they're, they're the most kind, I've found. So personally, I think the secret to a lasting career in your field is good character. It's being the type of person who can weather whatever comes your, your way. So I think with... With good character, you can take a disappointment like I had and turn it into an opportunity for growth, even if it stings at first. So that's that's the kind of thing I'm interested in talking about on this podcast. That's where I think this is probably going on top of the process stuff. I think it's the most helpful and the most valuable in the long term. So that is that's what I am trying to cultivate in myself, to be completely honest with you. And hopefully this channel can plant a few good seeds Hopefully in the next generation of creators, whoever listens to this, if anyone ever does listen to this, hopefully. But again, I'm just one guy. What do I know? I'm just a guy who draws pictures for a living. All right. So that brings us to the end of yet another episode. I can't believe it's been three episodes already. It's been really cool getting the hang and really getting a sense of how to do this. I've, it's been actually kind of fun doing it, which is surprising to me. So I hope, I hope you got something out of today's episode. Let me know in the comments uh, down below what you're thinking, where you are in your own creative journey. Uh, what are you struggling with? I would love to help. Um, links are all down there. My website, my web store, everything. Please share this with anyone you think would get something out of it. And I will see you guys next week. Peace.